there are several important remarks we want to make about graph neural networks. We take a minute to summarize and highlight the components of a GNN. A GNN with L layers is defined as L recursive compositions of graph perceptrons, in which the input signal X is rewritten as X sub zero. This is a composition of L layers, each of which is itself a composition of a filter with a pointwise nonlinearity. The filters that appear in each layer are parameterized by sets of coefficients HLK. Coefficients are attributes of individual layers. And they are also parameterized by a graph shift operator S. This is the same at all layers. The output of the GNN is the output XL of layer L. We represent this map as phi of X, S, and H. The learnable parameter in this function class is the filter tensor calligraphic H, which is a grouping of all the filter coefficients HLK that are used across all layers. The problem of learning with a GNN reduces to the problem of finding the tensor H star that minimizes the average loss over the training set. This is analogous to the problem of learning with a perceptron or learning with a graph filter, except that the tensor H contains coefficients for a group of filters, instead of containing coefficients for a single filter only. As was also the case of learning with a perceptron and a graph filter, the graph shift operator S is given. It is not part of the optimization space. The shift operator is interpreted as prior information that is given to the GNN for leverage. A subtle point that I don't want to leave unnoticed is that GNNs are minor variations of graph filters. We have said this of perceptrons already. They are, in a sense, the easiest possible modification to transform linear graph filters into a nonlinear function class. The same is true of GNNs. Their only difference with graph filters is the addition of pointwise nonlinearities and layer compositions. Since the nonlinearities are pointwise, the process signal enters individually. There is no mixing of components carried out by a nonlinear transformation. All of the component mixing that goes on in a GNN is carried out by linear transformations. More precisely, it is carried out by graph filters. A consequence of this observation is that if we understand the behavior of graph filters, we also understand the behavior of GNNs. There is little difference between one and the other. They are conceptually very close relatives. Now, despite their conceptual proximity, graph neural networks do work better than graph filters in practice, sometimes much better. We are showcasing the truth of this statement in labs 2 and 3. This is, in the face of it, unexpected. How come such a minor modification can produce significant differences in practice? There are good reasons related to signal invariance, as we will explore soon, to expect graph filters to work well. Since GNNs are close to graph filters, we should expect them to work well too, but not better, certainly not much better. But reality is reality. Experiments are there to be explained. There are somewhat unexpected stability properties of GNNs that explain their better performance relative to graph filters. We will study this in upcoming lectures. Another subtle point that I want to make sure I emphasize has to do with the transference of a graph neural network across different graphs. We know that GNN outputs depend on the graph shift operator S. We can interpret S as a non-trainable parameter that we pass to the GNN, a parameter that encodes prior information that we feed to the GNN for leverage. This is the perspective we have emphasized so far. We have thought of S as a way of encoding prior information about our signals of interest. 
but nothing prevents us from reinterpreting S as an input to the GNN. This interpretation enables transference across different graphs. Indeed, for a given filter tensor, we can execute the GNN using a graph S as an input or using another graph S tilde as an input. This is analogous to transferring the GNN across signals. For a given filter, we can execute the GNN with input signal X, and we can also execute the GNN for input signal X tilde. At the end of the day, what matters is that trained GNNs is just a filter tensor, H star. The filter tensor can be executed on different graphs in the same way in which it can be executed on different signals. To close this digression on transference of GNNs, let me say that the word transference is reserved to the case when a GNN that has been trained on graph S is executed on graph S tilde. Alternatively, we may choose to train on a family of graphs in the same way in which we train on a family of signals. In this latter case, we say that the GNN generalizes across different graphs of the family. It is not that the GNN is transferred to something we haven't seen during training, but that the GNN is sufficiently general that it captures the whole variety of graphs we have seen during training. I find the distinction somewhat pedantic. In both cases, we simply interpret the shift operator S as an input. The difference is whether we change it during training or not. But the reviewers of your papers may disagree, and there really is no cost in using a standard language. The final point that I want to illustrate has to do with the relationship between CNNs and GNNs. This diagram illustrates a GNN, a graph neural network. This other diagram illustrates a CNN, a convolutional neural network. See the difference? Let's repeat that. This is a diagram illustrating a graph neural network. And this is a diagram illustrating a convolutional neural network. If you see no difference between the two, it is because there is no difference between a CNN and a GNN. To recover a CNN, we just particularize the shift operator to the adjacency matrix of the directed line graph. We know that this is true because we have seen that convolutional filters in time are particular cases of graph convolutional filters. This equivalence comes from particularizing the shift operator to the adjacency matrix of the line graph. There is nothing to be said about the pointwise nonlinearity, which is, well, pointwise. It's always the same no matter what. It does not mix components. It is unaware of the underlying structure of the signal. If you didn't know what CNNs were, this lecture is a twofer. You get to learn what GNNs are, and you get to learn what CNNs are. If that doesn't excite you, do remember that the ability to recover CNNs and GNNs implies that graph neural networks are proper generalizations of convolutional neural networks. We can obtain the latter as a particular case of the former.